most of these videos have been featuring um, the people who've played on the album and me talking about the bases that I've used on the album, on the new one, uh, Trophy Hunting for Unicorns. This, however, I just kind of thought that uh, given the fact that Petra fans are paying attention to us, I just kind of wanted to haul this guy out. This is the base that I had in Petra. And I bought this brand new in 1970, if you can believe it or not. And I still have the sales tag for it. It was $225 in, uh, in 1970. There was a thing called the Fender Summer Sale. And I, I keep thinking I might be the only person who ever bought anything then, because nobody seems to remember the Fender Summer Sale. But that is how I acquired this. I had the first bass I ever owned that was uh, a decent bass was a Gibson EBO. But you can only pretty much get one tone out of it. It was where the body joined the neck. There was this giant humbucking pickup and you could only pretty much get one sound out of it. And a friend of mine said, well, why don't you try a Fender? And just happened to wander into a music store and they were having a Fender summer sale. So I traded it even up for this bass, which would have cost me $225. Uh, and now, if you try to get an American-made Fender, you better have some serious money because American-made Fenders, like I, like I said uh, in another video, um, some Fenders are made in, in other countries, like Mexico, Korea, and I think Japan, and maybe a few other places. Those are the less expensive ones, but uh, I went online and looked at some of the pricing, and even some of the less expensive ones go for about $749. An American-made Fender is going to cost you anywhere from $1,400, $1,600, $1,800. There's a, Fender, there's a thing called the Fender Custom Shop, and, um, well, that is you can pretty much ask them to make something to certain specific specifications that you want. But their prices are, I've seen, as low as $4,400 and up to $5,000 for an American-made Fender. Um, being in high school at the time when I had bought this, there's no way I would have even had the money to buy something like that. So I have had this, uh, it, well, since 1970. It is now 51 years old. And my wife's going to shoot me. This thing is a year older than my wife right now. And as you can see, uh, we'll be showing you a picture of what the base looked like originally. It was what's known as a sunburst finish. Well, I had seen a um, wood grain finish base, and I thought, wow, I, that was pretty cool. I, I like the wood grain look. So I, I had to sand it down, and as you can see, it's got all kinds of, well, got your predominantly belt buckle grief thing here in the back over the years, all kinds of wear on it. Right here, that is from um, being in a bad case. It's on its uh, third or fourth case over its lifetime. And originally, it had a cover over the bridge and a cover over the pickups. And every time you had to change strings, it was a real hassle. I have to get a screwdriver out and deal with that. And you couldn't play over the pickups uh, with that cover there. So I just took them off and I've moved so many times in my life I don't even know where those things are anymore I think I, I lost them it has its third set of pickups on it these are Bartolini's I don't know what happened to the original Fender pickups and for a few years I had a set of DiMarzio pickups they started sounding real thin after a while and I, I don't know why I couldn't do anything with them so I got rid of them and got the Bartolini's and I am sold sold totally on Bartolini pickups. I'm not endorsed by them, so I'm not getting anything to say this, but uh, my personal humble opinion, you're not going to find any other bass pickup that's as good as a Bartolini. My custom-made six-string bass has uh, Bartolini's on it. Um, I've also had uh, some of you guitarists and bass players who know what I'm talking about. You, uh, after you play the same instrument for a long period of time, you get these you start to wear the frets. You'll wear a groove into the fret. It causes the fret to go dead on a certain string. And there's a technique called fret shaving where they actually have to plane it and get the frets even again. And 
I've had it done twice. I've understood that you can't have it done the third time. You'd have to get it refretted, which I don't want to deal with it. It's uh, this thing hardly ever leaves the house. It is um, probably the closest thing I have to a uh, prized possession. I'll never get rid of it. And like I said, for years, this was the only bass I had. It's on the first two Petra albums. And I want to play a little something from the very first Petra album. Uh, I'm not proud of my playing on that album. I was 21, 20, 21 years old when that album was recorded. And I basically wasn't that good at that point in time. Um, the one thing on there that I thought I did a really good job on was a song that Greg Hogue wrote. The song is called I'm Not Ashamed. And if I can remember the part right, this is it. <laughs> I got a little bored with playing the same thing. If you listen to the first album, I'm kind of all over the place. But I got bored with it and started throwing my own licks into it. Stuff like... Uh, the best I remember what I did on uh, I'm, I'm Not Ashamed. Now, the first Petra album was recorded in December of 1973, and it wasn't released until the spring of 1974. The second album, Come and Join Us, that didn't come out until 1977. And once again, this bass is on that album as well. And Another song that Greg Hogue wrote that um, we have played quite a few times. We played it when we uh, when we had GHF. We always included some old Petra stuff. And we just recently did it at a 50-year uh, anniversary for the Adam to Apple Coffee House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That uh, That's where Petra basically got its start. And I'm going to uh, attempt to do something uh, from... Um, this is called Without You, uh, that Greg Hogue wrote, if I can remember it right. stop there or I'll not remember the rest of it. This bass is also featured on one of the first things I did by myself is this thing called Demos and Other Moments. And this is on, this bass is on several different tunes on it. It's not the only bass that I featured on the album, but it's uh, on um, two things that are extensive bass solos. A thing called um, Country Boy and a thing called Morning Dogs. Uh, there's a thing called This, That, Here, and There that features this bass. And there's uh, my one of my first attempts at writing a prog rock thing. It's, it's a, a suite called the Sunrise Suite. And once again, this is the only bass I had at the time. And all the bass parts you hear on that are on this. So uh, this is, by the way, available on our big cartel. So uh, I still have a few of those left. And there's some very interesting stuff on there. Uh, and like I said, if I have a prized possession, this is it. And eventually, we're going to do another video with acoustic guitars, and I have an American-made Epiphone that I want to show you, too. But uh, 
This is my 1970 Fender P-Bass. Thank you.